Good morning and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. As we complete the 150th episode today, we want to pause and thank our viewers for your support and encouragement. It keeps us motivated as we go from strength to strength. And we promise to bring the best of the business world and beyond to you every morning from Monday to Friday. With that, here's a look at the stories for the day. We Indians disagree on everything, but we agree SBI is the banker to every Indian. SBI loan 100% SBI is the banker to every Indian. The writing was already there on the wall. Numbers just confirmed it. For consumers who were already reeling under high fuels and food prices, the Tuesday evening news that March inflation has surged to 6.95% wasn't surprising. Amid all this, Chief Economic Advisor V. Anantanageshwaran's statement offers some hope. He has suggested that the government may share some burden if oil prices remain above $110 per barrel mark. But is there a relief in the offing? Our next report offers some insight. Petrol and diesel prices have been hiked by 10 rupees a litre each since March 21st, and India's retail inflation accelerated to 6.95% in March, its highest in 17 months. It is above the upper limit of the Reserve Bank of India's tolerance band for a third straight month. Meanwhile, there seems to be no immediate end to the war. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that peace talks with Ukraine have hit a dead end. The war has disrupted supply chain and considerably raised commodity prices. After a lull during the assembly polls, the prices of fuels have again started increasing. Consumers have been demanding relief for long. The government, on the other hand, is not relenting. It has not slashed excess duty, despite wide expectations that it would provide consumers some cushion from the sharp rise in retail prices. Meanwhile, Chief Economic Advisor V. Anantanageshwaran recently said that if crude oil persistently stays above $110 a barrel, then the government, oil marketing companies and consumers will have to share the burden. The benchmark Brent crude is currently trading at $106 a barrel, down from a recent high of $128. And the probability of oil persistently staying above $110 a barrel is also low. Analysts expect it to average at around $100 this year. The center had last slashed excess duty on fuel in early November last year by 5 rupees a litre on petrol and 10 rupees a litre on diesel. Gains from that move have been wiped out now. Things are expected to get worse in the near term as the full effect of the spike in crude oil and global energy prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine will be seen this month as the pass through to consumers at fuel pumps was delayed. In its latest policy review last week, the RBI opted to leave the repo rate unchanged at a record low of 4% even as inflation shows no signs of abating anytime soon. It wants to help revive the pandemic-hit economy. Economists believe that the higher-than-expected retail inflation may trigger a rate hike cycle from June. Governor Shaktikanta Das said the RBA has now put inflation before growth in its sequence of priorities. If you pass through March uh, CPI inflation data, we find that a large part of the upside surprise has actually been on the back of extremely strong momentum in food prices. Uh, and this, we believe, could continue into the months of April and May. Also, remember, April is likely to see uh, a larger pass-through of uh, adjustment in fuel costs that had begun uh, towards the end of the month of March. Some burden sharing of fuel costs between consumers, uh, oil marketing companies and government could happen at the current stage. And from a fiscal perspective, this is doable, largely because we believe FI22 saw robust tax collections, which in fact exceeded uh, the revised estimates that the budget had put out. And second, because LIC disinvestment getting pushed into FI23 offers a broad comfort as far as revenues is concerned. For the second half of the year, we could see inflation moderate somewhere in the range of 5.4 to 5.9 on anticipation of a normal monsoon outturn. 
easing of some of the disruptions on the supply side that have brewed up yet again and lower than trend growth that could inhibit a complete pass through of higher input prices seasonality effect and elevated global food prices especially edible oils and cereals will keep food inflation high in the summer months but there are expectations that inflation will moderate from the third quarter so the government may not be very keen on reducing the excise duty significantly it may choose to wait the government will also be wary of pushing up bond yields further if it chooses to increase borrowings to make up for any excess duty reduction however we cannot rule out the possibility of the government partially absorbing further increase in fuel prices to offer a small reprieve in inflation and boost consumer sentiment sab achhi dikh rahi hain yaar कौन सी खरीदूँ ये तो वही बात हुई चार हजार शेयर लिस्टेड है कौन सा लू वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग High oil prices are the main driving force behind the rocketing inflation. For long, countries around the world have been working to switch to alternative fuel, which is also environmentally friendly. Green hydrogen is one of them and fits the bill. And a lot is happening on this front in India too. Government had launched a green hydrogen policy in February this year. And giants of India Inc like Reliance, Larsen and Turbo and Adani have announced projects worth 6 trillion rupees. So, how is this sector shaping up and will promises turn into reality? Watch our next report to know more. Hyderabad based Greenco Group and Belgium based John Cockrell recently announced that they would build a hydrogen electrolyzer giga factory targeting 2 gigawatt in india this would be the largest such facility outside of china this partnership will reportedly entail an investment of about 4000 crore rupees analysts told business standard that reliance industries larsen and tubro and adani together have earmarked investments of close to 6 trillion rupees in green hydrogen projects clearly green hydrogen is powering the ambitions of india inc and this push by major corporate names comes as the government which launched a green hydrogen policy in february bets big on the sector on 15th august last year prime minister narendra modi announced the national hydrogen mission as a step towards environmental security and making india a global hub for the production and export of green hydrogen however becoming a major exporter of green hydrogen will not be feasible by 2030 given our stated target domestic requirements and plant capacities india's demand in 2021 as per snp global commodity insights uh, which is a subdivision of snp global uh, uh, was around 8.5 million metric ton in 2021 and this demand is expected to rise to 11 million metric ton by 2030 the target that india has set for itself is around 5 million metric ton so in some ways what india is trying to achieve is some level of self sufficiency to meet around half of its demand through locally produced green hydrogen which should be economically competitive so it will be a step in direction of self sufficiency but what you were ref- uh, what if you have to talk about uh, whether india will be exporting uh, a surplus that might not necessarily happen by 2030 but some of these ambitious targets that many corporates are pursuing seem to be directed towards ultimately moving into a position of energy exports nonetheless india's green hydrogen ambitions are nothing to sneeze at india plans to manufacture 5 million tons of green hydrogen per year by 2030 This would be half of the European Union's 2030 target of 10 million tons. India's target sounds impressive when compared to China's relatively shorter term plans. The country has announced a target to produce up to 200,000 tons per year of green hydrogen by 2025. 
India's power minister R K Singh has said that India will need at least 10 GW of electrolyzer capacity. If that is indeed the target, it is substantial. Meanwhile, according to KPMG, the EU is committed to have 40 GW of hydrogen electrolyzer capacity by 2030. Spain, Germany and France have announced their commitment to install 4 GW, 5 GW and 6.5 GW of green hydrogen respectively by 2030. The Global Hydrogen Review 2021 by the International Energy Agency details announced targets of various governments that adopted national hydrogen strategies. The data reveals, among individual countries, only Chile pips India so far, with plans to have 25 GW electrolysis target by 2030. Clearly, India has set stiffer targets than its European peers. But if China goes through with its plans, then India's capacities will pale in comparison. In September 2021, Reports emerged that China's hydrogen industry body, which is supervised by its government, had called for installing 100 GW of green hydrogen electrolyzers by 2030. At the end of the day, however, it will all boil down to how much the green hydrogen costs. If you really want to make uh, green hydrogen viable for most of the hard to abate sector, the, the, the cost must come down to around one and a half dollar to two dollar per kg, which is comparable to what is gray hydrogen today. For that, the electrolyzer cost must come down to around two hundred dollar per kilowatt hour, and its utilization must go up uh, to 80, 85 percent. And also, the renewable cost, if it can come down further by around 25, 30 percent, that will also help. So overall, these three things are in the mix to make sure that you know uh, green hydrogen comes down to a level of one and a half dollar to two dollar range per kg. Let's also look at the scale of the challenge ahead. According to S&P Global Commodity Insights data cited by a financial daily, there are 26 hydrogen projects in India with a total capacity of 255,000 tons per year. However, a majority of these announced projects are still in their early stages. Only around 8,000 tons per year of capacity is expected to be operational by 2024. The gap between intent and execution is clear. Time will reveal if that's a mountain we can climb. Yaal? Don't ask me. Then you got into stocks. With stocks, you balance with bonds and insurance in gold. There's a lot of work. You don't know how much money you have. अब तो सबको पता है। Five Paisa है All in One Account। Download Five Paisa now। अब तो सबको पता है। Investing made easy and rewarding with Five Paisa। Investments in securities market are subject to market risks। Read all the related documents carefully before investing। Soaring inflation due to high oil prices has led to a shift in RBI's policy stance. After a gleeful rally that the new age technology stocks saw in 2021, the uncertainty over gradual withdrawal of liquidity spooked investors as stocks collapsed below their issue prices in the later half of the year. However, after a long lull, a rebound visible in the market has lifted new age technology stocks off their lows in the last one month. So, is the magic returning to new age technology stocks or are investors witnessing a short-term euphoric overshoot? Our next report tells more. Shares of new age tech companies like Zomato, Nika, Paytm, Policy Bazaar and Cartrade witness a huge sell-off after their listing as global headwinds and uncertainty over rate hikes battered them below their issue prices. However, a rub-off effect has occurred in new age tech stocks after markets saw a smart comeback as geopolitical tensions eased. While the BSE Small Cap Index has outperformed the mid-cap by 0.77% in the past one month, the S&P BSE Sensex surged over 3% during the same period. Shares of Nika, Paytm, Policy Bazaar, Zomato, Cartrade too have zoomed between 2 and 34% in the past one month. 
However, despite the recent euphoria, analysts remain cautious over the new age tech stocks as interest rates rise. This is because these companies use weighted average cost of capital as discounting factor while valuing their firms. A rise in interest rate and in effect their respective WACCs will therefore reduce the current discounted value of expected earnings. But we don't see the risk appetite coming back into the new wage company at a time in which both India as well as globally we are entering a higher interest rate scenario. Uh, there are two reasons which I would describe uh, for this. First, one of the key reason why all the uh, new age high tech or high growth companies were getting higher valuation was because of easy availability of liquidity and at a, globally we were at a near zero interest rate scenario. Now both the things are reversing. The uh, US has indicated to accelerate the pace of their rate hike and plus also they have indicated that they might now do bond selling which is akin to a quantitative tightening. So the uh, relative availability of liquidity to the new wage uh, companies uh, will uh, you know, wane down. Uh, secondly and more importantly uh, in valuing this new age companies uh, the important factor here uh, is the how do you value the terminal growth and huge uh, amount of its overall current valuation is dependent on the terminal value so when the interest rate uh, goes up uh, there is a significant cut in the terminal value so that also would mean that the interest level in this new age uh, high growth uh, internet enabled companies will see uh, no reduction in the, their valuation which already we are seeing both in india as well as globally Outlook wise too, a dark cloud of speculation continues to hover above the new age tech pack as companies struggle to justify their valuations. AK Prabhakar of IDBI Capital, for instance, suggests investors to avoid the new age tech pack even if it corrects another 20%. Now, uh, there are management commentaries which came for, uh, or to say, Paytm. Where they said, you know, they will turn around in next four to six quarters. No, but uh, no, we need to see the detail. You no, know, when the result comes, only we will understand. No, Zomato, you no, know, they have started to charge uh, extra money now. No, now the charges of Zomato has gone up. So people expect the turnaround to be fast. Uh, but I don't expect that. No, Nike also. I did my study. No, the total market size of the segment which they are there is one lakh twelve thousand crores. You know, where there are multiple players, and their presence is in online, which is only eight percent. No, and out of eight percent, they have thirty-eight percent market share. So their revenue is only three thousand or three thousand two hundred crores. No, and the company to double. No, it will take time, and for the valuation, I think, no, it is safer to avoid. So no, even car trade, uh, I feel the same way. So no, these rallies, no, can be a speculative rally or maybe people are buying on hopes. No, because people have seen the stock correcting almost 60, 70 percent from the highest level. So people might be buying it, but uh, no, I would not uh, touch. Uh, I would not suggest to touch these stocks at current level. Also, there are better companies where. Uh, better managed companies, profitable companies which are trading at attractive valuation. No, so new tech companies, no, I would avoid, no, even at current level, even if they correct another 20%, I will avoid them. Other brokerages too have been raising red flags over the new age tech pack for a while now. While Jeffries wants adverse regulations to impact Zomato's growth, Access Securities believes that Nika's expenditure remains at risk if consumer conversion rates fail to commensurate marketing returns. Hence, with rising interest rates, only hard numbers are expected to rescue these stocks from a treacherous road ahead. The BSE Sensex and the Nifty 50 closed 0.41% and 0.31% down respectively on Wednesday. Markets will now resume trade on Monday after an extended weekend.
क्या किया शेयर्स में ट्रेडिंग तुम्हें फाइव पैसा नहीं पता ओए, अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडिया भी डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग After the markets let's see how technology is helping people transfer and accept money without any hassle following the RBI's guidelines India's payments processor has designed an on device wallet for unified payments interface transactions up to 200 rupees what is it and how will it make the life of people living in regions with limited or no internet connectivity easier let's find out in our next report Unified payments interface has become one of the most preferred digital payment modes because of superior user experience and interoperability. The National Payments Corporation of India, an umbrella body for retail payment systems, has been innovating and adding new features in UPI from time to time to expand its usage and realize the vision of billion transactions per day in the next 3 to 5 years. Various studies on payment systems have found that about 75% of the total volume of retail transactions including cash in India is below 100 rupees transaction value and 50% of the total UPI transactions have a transaction value of only up to rupees 200 to reduce the stress on the banking system and make the transaction process even simpler the NPCI has come out with the on device wallet feature for UPI users known as UPI Lite It will facilitate small ticket transactions. In phase 1, UPI Lite will process transactions in near offline mode that is debit offline and credit online. And later, UPI Lite will process transactions in complete offline mode. Users will have the option to enable the on device wallet on their UPI app. Once enabled, they can allocate funds from their bank account to UPI Lite. Such funds shall reside with the user's bank. in an escrow or pool or designated account and such balance shall reside on device on the common library of the UPI app at present only debit from UPI lite balance would be permitted and all credits will be processed online in the user's bank account maintained in the bank's core banking system the upper limit of a UPI lite payment transaction will be 200 rupees and the total limit of UPI lite balance for an on device wallet will be 2000 rupees at any point of time replenishment of funds in upi lite will only be allowed in online mode with additional factor authentication or using upi auto pay which has been registered by the user in online mode with afa the on device wallet balance will be displayed on the home screen of the upi app to eliminate the need for a separate balance inquiry further the upi app will by default Use UPI Lite balance for transactions having a value less than or equal to rupees 200, excluding peer-to-peer -peer collect request transactions. इसको 30 degrees कर देते हैं? अरे नहीं यार 45 degrees सही है. We Indians disagree on everything, but we agree. SBI is the banker to every Indian. SBI का video के वाइस ही savings account. Finally I agree. SBI is the banker to every Indian. The UPI Lite balance will be non-interest bearing and the transactions will not need the UPI pin. Well that's all we have for you today. We will be back with more news and analysis in our next episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.